Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Unit 1, Part C. For the patient one who is undergoing the operation or going to undergo the operation, for them there is a phase of care known as pre-operative phase, intraoperative phase, post-operative phase. I am sure that you will be aware of these terms. If not, in just a brief manner, pre indicates before. So, before operation, the care is provided by the nurse to the patient is known as pre-operative phase care. While intra indicates ongoing, when the operation is ongoing in the OT theater, the care is provided by the nurse. The role performed by the nurse is indicated in the form of intraoperative phase care. And post operative is nothing but after. After the operation, the patient will be taken to an observatory room. At that time, the care provided by the staff is known as post operative phase care. So, pre indicates before, intra indicates ongoing of operation. And post indicates after the operation. Pre-operative phase. In pre-operative phase, the very first thing is the staff one who is working there, they need to get ready to give the treatment. Well, first we need to assess the patient's condition because every patient are not in the same condition. Each patient will be having different conditions and they will be in the different mode. Their psychological level will not be the in same conditions. So, we need to assess them, we need to make a care plan so that we can work effectively. And second is, we need to educate the patient as well as even family members to take their concern. We need to explain the procedure, we need to take their willingness and then mostly every patient is not strong enough to hold the fear. And as usual, when it comes to operation, everybody will have a frightened fear. So, we need to provide them a psychological support and we need to talk positively, build confidence in them. And this one is very important, pre-operative diagnostic test. And generally, even few surgeons require few specific things. Like, for example, the patient should have BP level normal, not even more, not even less. And uh, the patient should not have food. They should be in a fasting mode. The patient bowel system should be clean. Like, uh, they should not consume any water in the last two hours. They should follow a hygiene method like before coming to operative tater, they need to take shower. Like that, there are few conditions and that need to be followed and a pre-diagnostic method uh, me and pre-diagnostic measures like uh, uh, checking the vital signs and uh, checking the heart rate, everything should be done before itself, before getting into the operation tater. In pre-operative care, first we need to identify the correct patient, take the history like this is the first time they are undergoing that condition or they have been already undergone this condition. And mainly we need to assess the pain level and nutrition level. Pain level is in three types like mild, moderate and severe. In nutrition level, whether they are undernourished or overnourished, whether they are in obesity conditions, everything need to be measured. And the signs and symptoms also. By using signs and symptoms, we, we, we can prepare the care plan by which we can provide a quality care. The physician one who is going to be performing the surgery will mark the site. We need to maintain it and our duty is to establish a quality IV line because in the operation tater there will be a lot of condition because of lot of fluid lots. We need to insert fluids in the IV cannula. So a quality IV cannula should be inserted and uh, even before getting into the operation tater in pre-operative time also there will be medications should be given to the patients fluid should be given to the patients because of that also IV line is very important and this is very important the psychological support and we should make the patient comfortable as i explained already many times the patient one who is going to the operation tater will not be in a healthy mindset they will be very much in a frightened mode. We need to support them. We need to speak very positively so that they can gain hope, gain strength to undergo this condition. Next, we need to share the patient's condition with our co-workers so that the quality of care will not be reduced from one person to another person. Intraoperative phase. In this phase, the first thing we need to see is the operation tater is clean and mainly the equipments. Once used equipments should not be reused and we should wisely use the human resources. That is nothing but the staff. We should not make the operation tater as a crowded place. We should use the staff in a wise way. And then we should take the patient from the ward to the 
operation theater and we should make them the patient to lie in such a position that the surgical site should be exposed for example if the surgery is going to be performed in the chest region or the in the abdomen region then the patient should be lying down in the supine position like that the operation site should be exposed and this is main the patient should be connected to the grounding device this is nothing but the unwanted current energy that is coming from the ground will be cutted like will be stopped by using this device because the gen uh, generally the patient will be covered with lots of machines with lots of uh, uh, gadgets around him so unwanted electricity unwanted electricity hazards will be reduced by using this method grounding device and before bringing the patient we should definitely check once or twice the every materials which is present inside the operation theater is in the correct count and when the operation is going on we need to document down we need to note every each and very minute point also should be noted down this is intraoperative phase post operative phase soon after the surgery the patient will be transferred from the operation theater to the ward or the icu when the patient is getting transferred the staff or the nurse one who is working their main focus is to make sure at what condition the patient is present in the current mode mainly at what physical condition they are because now the physical condition is very important mainly the pain level we need to assess the pain level if the pain level is more severe we need to provide pain relief medication however generally the pain relief medication will be provided if the pain relief medications the painkiller is not working we need to inform the related physician so that they can increase the dosage of the medication that could work for the patient and before transferring the patient we should arrange all the emergency equipments the airway equipments the oxygen mask and any kind of emergency equipments should be already pre prepared because we will be assisting the vital signs and other measures daily routine every day if there is any warning sign that is occurring we need to inform that to the physician so that we can prevent that condition getting into a risk factor if the physician is not present there we can take the action in the guidance of the senior staff one who is present there so to take this action in a fast mode we need to arrange the emergency equipments earlier itself and rest of the treatment is generally like medications fluids if there is a reduced in the rbc level we will be pro providing blood to the patient oral fluids for maintaining the electrolytes and fluids so general treatment will be provided this is post operative assessment wound healing process see wound healing process is a complex process because wound healing may take from few days to few months and even years to get healed properly and this is a organized process it has a steps or the phases through which it will be going on for example the wound healing is going through the hemostasis and then inflammation and then proliferative and then maturation like that it is going in an organized way there is it goes by step by step and this wound healing the main aim is to restore the normal structure and function of the organ or the place before the injury how that area was like that it should be restored after the wound healing that is wound healing process while this wound healing process involves lots of cells newly formed cells and already present cells like wbcs platelets and cells like neutrophil macrophage lymphocyte keratinocyte fibroblast endothelial cell and many wound healing phases or wound healing stages here they have been given only three stages that is inflammatory proliferative and maturation only three phases they have been given but actually there is four stages but it is explained here if you see here hemostasis is the first stage inflammation is the second stage proliferative is the third stage and maturation is the fourth stage if you are writing so make four columns first is hemostasis second is inflammation third is proliferative and fourth is maturation if you see bleeding stopping stopping the bleeding is known as hemostasis and it occurs within one day the time period of hemostasis is one day within one day the cut from the bleed will be stop gradually based on the length and the degree of the cut the bleeding time will be calculated 
if the cut is very small the bleeding time is very short if the cut is very long like uh, very deeply it is inserted then the bleeding time will be prolonged at this uh, hemostasis if you see the platelets from our body will start to gather in the wound second place to stop the bleeding this is first phase and the time period is one day within one day okay and if you see the second phase inflammation inflammation is a defense method in our body to protect our body from the infection the inflammation occurs around the wound inside the inflammation the healing process will be going on the cleaning of the wound the healing of the wound will be occurring inside the inflammation this is a defense method and this time period is from 2 to 5 days so see bleeding stops in one day and 2 to 5 days it takes inflammation process and next third phase proliferative this is from 5 days to 3 weeks here when the cut is occurred at that place new collagen starts to occur and a new capillary starts to fill in so that the blood circulation will get the normal way and when there is new collagen is occurring then gradually this wound comes together when they are coming near there will be a contraction in the wound because of that contraction when the wound is coming near the skin will be getting dry to make sure the area is moist there will be a cell coming from different parts of our body the new newly generated cell will be forming there to keep the area moist this is second phase sorry this is third phase that is flora this is third phase that is proliferative and next last phase we have maturation that is the time period of this is 3 uh, weeks to 2 years the collagen which is formed will start to combine with each other with will start to form a chain and get strong but if you see the original tissue which is present in our body will be 100 percentage strong while now the newly formed tissue is only 80 percentage strong this is not as strong as the original one so this is the wound healing phase or wound healing process or wound healing stages